Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. This is Aisha Imran. And this is Malaika Nazeel. Today we are here to see how light behaves when it is exposed to any media. As we know, light interacts with matter in several ways. Have you noticed these phenomena happening in your daily life? Wait, I just thought that it's an illusion. You want to say that there is a proper scientific reasoning behind this phenomenon? Exactly. Do you have any idea about the basic property of light named as refraction? Oh, yes, I know that. Refraction is the bending of light as it passes from one transparent substance to another. Right. You might be surprised, even our vision depends upon this basic property of light. But I am confused, how just simple bending of light can cause this huge phenomenon? Alright, this is due to the change in speed of light that causes change in direction. Let's imagine these scenarios. Where's the fish? What's the exact position of that fish? Okay, just take a hold. Let me explain it to you. It's basically the snail's flock that can answer your query. Alright, I can remind the snail's law. Snail's law gives the relationship between refraction and angle of refraction, angle of incidence and refractive indices of a given pair of media. Yes. It states that the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is a constant for the light of given color and for the given pair of media and the constant is actually refractive index. The angle of incidence and refraction are measured from imaginary line drawn at 90 degree to the surface of two substances. In laboratories, we routinely use an Abbey's refractometer to measure refractive indices. It is a classical optical instrument used for both liquid and solids. The device is relatively inexpensive, accurate and requires little maintenance or calibration, uses small sample volumes, is easy to use. To understand its working principle, let's study parts of a refractometer first. This is the base of refractometer that supports the whole body. Here is the eyepiece. You can easily clear your view by rotating it. Inside the eyepiece, there is a telescope. As you look into it, there is a crosshair image and a scale. The scale is calibrated and its lower side gives refractive indices. Whereas, the upper part scale is called the brick scale. It gives smaller concentration of sugar solutions. On the crosshairs, also called reticle, the shadow boundary is seen through the telescope. If you see any dispersion, which means that there is a rainbow color appearing along the boundary line. Just use this dispersion correction knob. Here is a compensation scale or dispersion dial. Rotate the knob until you get a sharp light and dark boundary. Below this dispersion correction knob, we have an adjustment knob, also called refractive index hand wheel. As the name shows, it's something related to refractive index. As we rotate this knob, the reading on the green scale as well as the position of shadow boundary changes. Using this knob, we will adjust the shadow boundary at the center of crosshair. Once set, we will read the scale. The scale is calibrated and each deviation is at difference of 0.0005. Apart from this knob, we have three thermostatic connect ports. These are also known as circulating water connector. As the refractive index depends upon the temperature, these connector ports help us to stabilize the temperature of our sample. While on the side of refractometer, we have a thermometer socket to place thermometer. Ensure that your temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. Besides, here is a hand wheel or a lock. Open it and have a look of the prisms inside. One is refractive prism that is so smooth. The other prism is illuminating prism that has a rough surface. It helps to 
scatter the light in all directions on the opposite side of prism. There is a window covered with a shading. It is the place from where the light enters the prism. Below this, there is a mirror that is used to reflect light. It is not used unless we have a solid sample. Once you are familiarized with the parts of refractometer, now it's turn to understand its working principle. The Abyss refractometer depends upon the total internal reflection. So, it is based on the measurement of critical angle. Here, a convergent beam strikes the surface between the unknown sample of index N and a prism of known index C N prime. The beam is so oriented that some of its rays just graze the surface so that one observes in the transmitted light a boundary between dark and light. Now let's check how this abyss refractometer actually works. Before using it, clean it so that there is no contamination there. To do that, we will be using a little bit of ethanol and a small piece of cotton. To mention here, we can also use methanol to wash the refractometer. What you have to do is add a few drops of ethanol onto the lower prism, dab a piece of cotton onto both the lower and the upper prism to dissolve anything that might have been left there. Make sure that you dab the cotton instead of rubbing it in order not to scratch either the prisms. To check whether the refractometer is working correctly or not, first perform the experiment with water for standardization. Take a dropper and add 2-3 to three drops of water onto the lower prism. Make sure not to touch the prism. Then. Lower the upper prism carefully so that the liquid spreads evenly between two prisms. Now open the light window and look through the eyepiece. If you notice any dispersion, use the dispersion correction knob here until you have a clear dark and light boundary. Now start rotating the adjustment knob to move the interface. Keep rotating the knob until the interface is placed right between the cross hairs. Once it's there, you are now ready to measure the refractive index. Just record the refractive index from your scale. You can see that the refractive index of water is 1.33 or precisely 1.336. As this measurement is near to the standard refractive index of water, our refractometer is almost accurate. Now open the prisms, wash it again with ethanol and let the ethanol evaporate. Make different sugar solutions and repeat the same procedure with them. Measure the refractive indices. From the data collected, you can determine the molar concentration of unknown sugar solutions. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Like, share and subscribe our channel.